Hey everybody, I'm Marion, the Inappropriate Artist, and welcome to my channel. I have so many new subscribers and so many new people watching the channel. I just want to say one, thank you, thank you, thank you. Your subscriptions are getting me up. I'm already, I'm up over 240 subscribers. I mean, yes, I have to make a thousand before I can make any ching off of anything on this channel, but my goal with this channel is not necessarily to make money through the advertising it's to let you know what I'm doing and get support for my project and share my artwork and share tips and tricks and all sorts of fun stuff I hit the road two and a half years ago and I am out painting all 50 states so whew, I've got 31 under my belt uh, that I've been to I haven't painted all of those yet I have a few I have to return to. They were just pass-throughs. But I'm counting them as I touched them. <laughs> so, all of that being said, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am, oh, I'm also writing a book. Uh, I'm writing a couple books because it's going to be a series. Um, this is going to be a, a long project. It might take me, meh. Someone said, I originally thought six years. Someone laughed in my face and said ten years, honey. So who knows? Could be somewhere in between. But I am handwriting my book, um, and so it's taking time. And today I needed to take a little break for myself from that to give my hands a rest um, from writing. And um, oh, and I'm sitting here holding my witch hands. I love these things. My friend Kate gave, gave these to me, Kate Kiki Hall, thank you. Um, I, f I fidget with them. So these are my, I, some people have like fidget spinners and other things and like things on their scarves to twist, right? For me, um, because it really helps with my focus, it's one of the reasons I smoke cigarettes. And so I started trying, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best to substitute the cigarettes with my witch hands. <laughs> I'll let you know how it works. But I keep them in my hands when I'm like in my left hand when I'm writing or you know now I'm talking to you so my hands need to be busy. It's just a thing for me. So I'm fiddling. I can hmm, a very serious deep thoughts. I can scratch my nose. I love them. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, my witch hands. Um, so today, I thought I would talk to you about um, how, to, how I'm doing my best to get myself outside of the van more when it comes to painting. And one of the things is that I need to create a very portable painting system that works for me. And that's been where I've gotten stuck. I have a pouch coming, so that's going to help me out a little bit. And it's one of my own. I can't wait to show you when all that stuff comes. I'm going to put it all, I, as soon as all my shipments come, I'm going to put it together and I'm going to do a little unboxing video. It'll be fun. All right. So, um, but yeah, so I'm putting together a more portable painting solution for myself. And so one of the things that I have been like, I am seriously lusting after, and I have no problem saying that because, you know, we've all had something in our lives that would make what we do easier better, um, doesn't cost a lot, but it was never quite in the budget, you know, and I kept like saying, I really want it, but is it just a want or is this something I need? So since I'm always in a position of having to make that decision between want and need, I waited and I waited and I waited and I waited. And then when I went to order it, it was out of stock. And I was like, oh, serious? And I thought, well, you know what, take a deep breath. Maybe you're just not meant to have this right now. And then when I got here to Round Rock and I was, uh, I had a 
wonderful, beautiful, lovely soul who has made it possible for me to sit still for two months without worrying about painting sales or asking for contributions because that is incredibly distracting. They have given me two months of bliss being able to just write without worrying about money. That's a gift. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, those two months are almost done, but I got two months. <laughs> anyway, so one of the things I've been trying to do is get this. And so I have, now that I'm close to the end of that two months and I see what I have let, had left, I, I did decide that, okay, part of this money was also to do things like this to invest in art supplies and things that I have wanted or needed to make my painting experience better, easier, um, more productive. So without further ado, I have this beautiful portable palette. I think they call it like a I don't know. It's, it's a silly name, and I can't even remember it, but it's a silly name. I have a pink one. Now, they do come in different colors. Um, the blacks were out of stock, and I saw the pink, and I was kind of like, well, this is just wastewater, so I don't really care about the color of this. That's not what matters. So. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little inappropriate. What can I say? Um. So here we go. This is my new collapsible water dish palette. Ta-da! Okay, I have to put my witch hands down now and take off my glasses so I can see what the heck I am doing. All right, so right here is, this is the first thing. So you pop that little lever, right? Then this separates like that and they become two lovely pieces I will put this one down for now this one as you can see is a lovely dish that can sit like this and no it is not an ashtray so ah, I love that it's a water dish so this I'm just going to do this so you can see. Sits nicely like that, right? And so like when I'm painting, my brush can rest across the top in these little grooves. Is that not awesome? I love it, love it, love it. Oh, I should put this more like so you can see it in the, um, with my shirt in the background. So yeah, see that little, isn't that exciting? I love it. Okay. So that, and then, oh, right, on this side, you also have these guys. So you've got one that's, I mean, that's, this is fat. Your brushes aren't this big. Um, but when you want to dry your brushes and you don't want them sitting with the, hang on, I'm going to get a brush. Pause. All right, I'm back. Okay, so you can rest your brush across the top like so, right? And you can also, so now after you've rinsed your brush off, right, and you want it to dry, but you don't, whoopies, that's the wrong one. There we go. See, look at that. Isn't that awesome? And then when you're ready to use it, it's ready to go. But that way, because what happens when you dry your brushes upright like this, right? When they're up like this, the water creeps down into this whole area and then it can separate it and all this breaks apart and gets loose and wonky. So that's how one way to save your brushes is know to dry them upside down. Or I really do a lot of heavy blotting on mine and I'll dry them horizontally, but I try really hard to make sure they're tilted. Anyway. I am digressing. I want to definitely just talk about this. So, awesome. Rinse, right? Oh, little 
trick tip, right? These are kind of lightweight. Um, I am a klutz. I knock stuff over all the time. I'm terrible. There's a reason that my mug is a lethal weapon because I will knock it over. This sucker is not going anywhere, right? This awesome bottom makes sure. This is kind of top heavy. So one of the things that occurred to me is all I need to do is take some pebbles, rinse them off, right? And throw them in the bottom. And now not only do I have weight so this won't tip over accidentally because I'm a klutz, um, but I also now have something to kind of brush the tip of my brush on gently at the bottom to create a little bit. So they often make buckets that have ridges on the bottom so you can kind of scrub your brush a little bit. The rocks will do that for you. All right, so there's a little tip trick for your water dish. Okay, so that's, I think, everything with this. So I'm gonna put this back. And, oh, also, if I, if I have a separate water dish, I can use this another way, so I'm actually gonna leave this out. All right, now, on to the palette. I am so excited about this. All right, so now, here we go. This is your, you see, it's really quite well engineered. You see the bottom? to show you that so you can see da -da 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 -da. right and then I'm hoping it gets a little bit easier as time goes on <laughs> let's try that again So this just opens up like that, right? Did you see? So I, there you go, just a little click and it opens. So now I have a nice clean surface for mixing. If I want to, I can use this, right? If I'm really being portable. And this is what is so exciting. All right, so when I, working outside, one of the problems is gouache dries out wicked fast. Gotta say, wicked fast. So I like to work with creamy pigment and it's very rare that I get to because I'm constantly having to reconstitute what I've got. And it's been an issue for me. I've wanted to get creamier. All right, so this has a silicone. Look at this. For anyone like me who is OCD and hates the way when you close stuff, everything inside just mixes together and gets dirty, this ensures that it does not get dirty. What? So that'll peel off, right? And I can put my all my colors in here. I mean, I I can put almost all my colors in here. So I, you know, I have two blues that I love to use. Actually, I take that back. I lied. I have one, two, three, really four, because that turquoise is considered a blue. So four blues, so I probably do all blues, right? I have a couple reds and a couple of yellows. And then I have, and these are my two regulars, and then I have like two other yellows. I have a Naples yellow and a permanent yellow, and those two can go down here. Up here I can have burnt umber and pearline black. And then I can put a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of like ivory black in there, right? I wouldn't put white in here because I'm always going to use a fresh white. 
almost always I might you know what actually I take that back I might put a tiny bit in so that I have a little dried white in here for emergencies but like the white will dry out who knows maybe it won't maybe it'll stay I just feel like it'll get contaminated really easily in here anyway fresh white's not such a big deal anyway to carry with me so yeah I can fit almost all my colors in here almost all of them this is very exciting for me <laughs> oh So, oh, the other thing I'm going to do, so, okay, just squeezing and using this, just putting your gouache in and using this all by itself, not necessarily going to be what keeps the gouache creamy. You do not need a lot of this, by the way. What I'm about to show you. So, this is a watercolor blending medium. Okay? What this does is it'll help keep it liquid, right? So, one of the things that I'll do is I'll put a couple of drops of this in with my pigment, stir it up with my palette knife, right? And then I'm gonna mist. With my water, I'm just going to mist the top of it and then close it up with this guy, right? And then when I go out to paint, or anytime I want to paint, I have creamy gouache. Ah! And, you know, so, and this will force me to always clean my palette. I can, when I'm in the studio, the van or any place else where I'm working. Oh yeah, so by the way, this is a Winsor Newton watercolor blending medium. It slows drying. So that's also a nice plus. I mean, gouache dries wicked fast, so I don't usually have to wait very long. I mean, the only time it takes really a long time to dry is when I've saturated the paper with water, right? And, and I'm treating it more like a watercolor at that point. Excuse me. So, blending medium, just a couple drops. You can tell. Like, you stir it, and you can tell the consistency that you want. You want that creamy, put the brush in and just drag it across, to, you know, consistency. It is so delicious. I know. Why am I talking about it like it's food? Uh, makes me excited. Food makes me excited. I'm thinking, like, caramel. You know, but not even that thick. So maybe more like like a good Heinz 57 ketchup. You know, slow moving but moving. <laughs> That's how you want your paint when you're painting with gouache. Slow moving but moving. Alright. This will help keep it that way. Right, and I've, uh, my friend, my friend, okay, a woman whom I follow on YouTube, <laughs> obviously I watch her a lot because it's like she lives in the van with me practically. We paint together a lot. She's wonderful, Sarah Burns. She's the one who introduced me to this. She uses it. I had to give it a try. Um, she has an entire video on how she cleans it and that's exciting. Um, I've watched it a bunch of times. It helps me clean. It mo I actually watch it while I'm cleaning my palette because it motivates me to keep cleaning my palette. Um, but I might make one for you guys once I get, when I get to a point where I need to clean this. So how exciting is that? So I am going to get this filled up. Okay, so I've grabbed my little cigar box of paints, which I've had this cigar box since I was, I think, 19, maybe, a little younger possibly. Um, so it no longer has its lid, although I do have it somewhere 
I found it recently. I saved it so I could paint it. I, I, now I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, so um, something else that also helps slow the drying process. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why does this have white paint all over it? Bum, bum, bum. Okay, I'm going to find the culprit. Um, obviously something is loose in here that shouldn't be. Oh, this one has white paint on it too. Aha! I found it. My permanent white. So sometimes, okay, so I changed altitude a bunch of times, which is probably why this happened. Um, but the permanent white has extra blending medium in the tube and it's always like too much anyway uh it's this is the permanent white that is like this and the Winsor Newton designer gouache by the way is what I use so a little bit I don't know if you can see there of the blending of of the paint squeezed out of the tube yeah that's what happened so I have a tiny little mess here to clean up. It won't take but a moment when I'm done here. But in the meantime, let's see. So let's, I'm not using here. The zinc white, we're just going to put aside. Oh, I haven't used this in so long. So I used to do French matting, and I used to use gold gouache to paint bevels. I have it haven't used it in a really long time. Um, I haven't found a need for it, but we'll see. Maybe. Who knows? Um, ah, here's my permanent yellow D. Permanent alizarin crimson. I am not using the violet. I haven't used this in a long time. Once after I switched, once I bought the tube of permanent alizarin crimson, I started mixing it with um, my favorite blue, and um, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, once I started doing that, it, I, I was lost to that purple. It's like my absolute favorite purple in the world, and it makes all the different shades of purple that I love <sighs> with ease. And, um, and it, and it has better light fastness than this one. Although this one's pretty darn good. It's still, like, anyway. But it's a violet. It's a lovely violet. And who knows, maybe someday I will find that I absolutely need this. But it's not going in my portable palette. Uh, this is... So I do not chuck these right away. Because I can get, I have a roller, and when they get nice and warm, you know, not hot, hot, but warm, I take the roller and I can roll the tube. I mean, some people use the cranky things, you know, the toothpaste crankers, you can use that too, but I don't have one. So I have a roller, it's like a little hand roller, and I just roll the tube and I roll all the paint up to the top as close as I can get it, and then I use my palette knife and I can scrape out every last bit. And then, when that's not enough, if I got it all down in the top here, I can take, I have a special pair of scissors that I can use to cut through this, and I can cut through here, and then open it up, and scoop it all out. I use every last drop. Burnt Umber. Cerulean blue. Mmm. Anthraquinac. No. Anthraquinone.
anthraquinone, anthraquinone, maybe, maybe I said it that time, blue, it's my favorite blue. All right, this is a watercolor. You're like, but you paint gouache. I know. I haven't found the gouache equivalent yet. This is an M. Graham watercolor. I bought this years ago, uh, not this tube, but this color years ago uh, when I was doing washes for matting, um, for French matting on art artwork. So when I was picture framer, because it's incredibly staining and you never needed to use a lot of it. Um, and I could get like a beautiful stain panel on the map board so easily with this color. And, and it just, it looked old. It has an old quality to it. Um, very earthy almost. So I, uh, as a blue and, um, it makes great stormy skies. It also makes beautiful grays. It makes gorgeous purples and vibrant as anything greens. Yeah. Because it's so translucent. It, or transparent, excuse me. Transparent, not translucent. Transparent. The color is transparent. So, it, um, it blends beautifully with gouache and it turns into gouache basically as soon as you blend it. Right? So it's just, I use it for mixing. I use it by itself too. I do a lot of skies with it. Um, I just love it. My favorite color blue. All right. So, all right, back to these guys. I have a cadmium free lemon. I am working with these and doing my best to get used to them. I'm still struggling. I liked my other cadmium yellow light is what I was using and I and it was an M gram and I really liked the quality of it I haven't found its equivalent in Windsor Newton yet to be as nice as this one but meh, we'll get there all right so this was cadmium free yellow and cadmium free lemon yellow. Um, this is going to give me more springy greens and um, really like bright luminescent um, oranges. And then this one, the cadmium, is going to deepen it up. It makes more golden tones, so like for the golden hour, right? Ah, this is my friend. Um, I also... You know, there's something I'm noticing. I switched to the Windsor Newton Ultramarine Blue. My first... So my original set of wash was the M grams. They're not cheap. And so, but the Windsor Newton washes are all really good quality, high quality pigment, light fastness. I, I choose carefully so that I have good light fastness as far as my pigments go. The only one I've got that really doesn't do the best is the Opera Rose. Um, and I'm slowly learning how to mix a pink that kind of comes close to it, but I haven't quite gotten it yet. But the Opera Rose is my least light fast out of all the ones that I have. So I am looking to find a substitute for that or a, a replacement eventually. Um, And this is my turquoise blue, which I might include. Yeah, so this ultramarine blue from M. Graham had much more luminosity to it than the uh, 
Windsor Newton Ultramarine. But I wonder if it's because of blending medium usage or is it quality of pigments? I don't know. But yeah, I'm, I'd be curious. I haven't done a side by side with these two and I, I think I kind of want to. All right, so what, if I have a set, here's a, a quick tip. All right, well, let me finish this first. I'm picking my colors. All right, so I think that, okay. So let's see how much room I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12 big squares and then four of the little corners so um, yeah I bought Naples yellow because I thought I was going to use it for like beachy grasses and stuff. I don't know. I haven't found my good mix for it yet. Maybe it's just because I haven't spent time with it. I need to spend time with it in my palette. So maybe it'll go in. We will see. So if I have four, eight, alright. So definite two, Blizzard and Crimson. Now I also have this is an, another one of my older M. Graham colors. This is a Napthal Red. So, I really love my permanent alizarin crimson. My Napthal Red is more like orangey looking as a red, right? Whereas the alizarin crimson is more pinky. So, so this is the permanent alizarin crimson. And then this is the Napthal. Maybe this is working. So you can see how much orangier the Napthal is. That's the one that has the tape on it, right? Oh, sorry. And then the other one is the permanent alizarin crimson. And you can see that it's more pinky. And this is more, oops. This is more like blood. And this looks like what everybody thinks blood looks like, but it doesn't. <laughs> so yeah. Um, or maybe it's the other way around. But yeah, so those are my two reds. So when I want my oranges in the to have more of a pinky cast to them, I use the alizarin crimson. When I want them to be more like burning flames, right? Uh, that's when I would use this naphtha. Oh, almost forgot. Before I fill this up with pigment. Side note. When you are painting anywhere, I paint off grid all the time. If I do not have a fire pit in which to dump my wastewater in when I'm done painting. So if I feel like there's too, pig too much pigment in here or I can't find a place where I can safely dump it responsibly, I will then dump it into here. So then this way this can travel 
and the next time I get to a bathroom or a sink, I can dump down the sink. Ta-da! Done. You can see my little setup here. I know it is no fancy thing. There's my little spray bottle, there's the water bottle, here's the palette, and I am gonna squeeze these babies in here. So I have picked it, my picked, picked it. And my English is fabulous today, by the way. I picked it. I picked my Napthal Red, the Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Yellow, Cadmium Free Yellow, Cadmium Free Lemon Yellow. This is the Permanent Yellow Deep. And I like this, um, for creating really deep dark oranges or really earthy greens. That's what works great with that. Um, then here is my favorite blue, the Anthraquinone. Maybe I said it. Anthraquinone blue. Uh, really deep dark blue watercolor. Used for mixing mostly, but off. sometimes I use it by myself. By, by myself. All by myself. No, so <laughs> I mix it with this permanent alizarin crimson to make a gorgeous deep dark purple for shadows and for tree trunks and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, this is my cerulean blue, the ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and my for my black I have chosen my perline black, which is that deep dark green black that I love so much. So those are my colors, and I am going to squeeze them in. Okay, I hope this works. I'm trying a little different new setup. So here we go. Here's my palette. This is my blending medium. These are my paints. I also have this little eyedropper. I don't need this necessarily. This is just water that I keep in here. It helps me clean the dropper. I also have my palette knife here. Up top here, I think I am going to put... Alright people, this is a bold move for me. I am going to squeeze a lot in here. She told me, be fearless. Just put a, put a bunch in because you're really going to use it up. get from the bottom as much as I can. There you go. Wipe that off. So I'm going to squeeze them all in and then I'll add the blending medium. Now I'm going to squeeze a little bit of this anthraquinone blue over here. Because I'm going to make a purple over here. I don't need too much. I'm just doing a little bit right now. Sometimes as tubes age, they don't always hold up well, or changes in altitude can cause it to, but sometimes the tubes can burst, or the caps can break, like in this one the cap broke. I have a turquoise where the tube burst. Um, a little bit of tape goes a long way. So that's the Napfall Red. Here's the permanent alizarin crimson. Come on. 
This guy is my purple mixer. And usually use, since this is an intense dark watercolor, I would call that, if I call that part one, I'm going to use at the very least two parts of red. So that would be like one and two. Let me take then now a couple drops. All right. So you see I haven't put very much in here at all. Um, and I'm just going to put two, three, four. Start with four drops. I can see that this is still really red. And I can tell, because see how transparent it gets on the uh, palette knife. So another bloop of you. Mmm. Oh, look how pretty that color is. Wow. That is really burgundy, but not quite the purple I want, so a little bit more blue. So that, nice, is a nice, deep, dark, shadowy purple, and I can adjust it however I want, but straight off of there, it's going to come out a gorgeous shadow color that I like to use for tree trunks. All right. Before I move forward, Clean off my tops. Okay, so now on to the yellows. Cadmium free yellow. I will say these cadmium free colors are really lovely creamy colors. I they're very opaque. So they take over whatever you mix them with. Very opaque color. Permanent yellow deep. Is, it is incredibly um, dark color as well. But like I said, I like it because I don't have a yellow ochre or... Um, a raw sienna and this color this yellow helps to make you can even see how I could use that in a transparent form for a sunset all by itself just extra water in there and woo you got a nice lovely transparent sunset So those are all my color colors that I've put in here. This is like my regular mixing palette. What you see here with the, um, so there's my white. That's my zinc white. And I'm toying with putting a permanent white in here or not. All right, so this one and the burnt umber are the only two mixed pigments out of a tube that I have here. All of these are single pigment colors. These are all single pigment colors, right? So the perline black, the and that and and that the very dark blue, <laughs> the ultramarine, the cerulean, uh, 
the naphthol, the permanent alizarin crimson, the cad yellow, or cad free yellow, cad free lemon yellow, and the permanent yellow deep are all sigmund pig, single pigment colors. The burnt umber is a mixed pigment. And this nap, uh, Naples yellow is a mixed pigment. And you'll see it's not really a yellow. It's more of a buff. And I like it when I'm making sands. So I will often take this, a teeny tiny bit of zinc white, blend it and, and make a, you know, start with gra like blended grasses. And then I'll add often just a teeny tiny bit of the alizarin crimson if I want to make it look more pinky. Um, and then if, I, if it's more fall, I'll use this more orangey red, the naphthol red, because it'll, it'll just give it that more burnt rich color. So, you know, but yeah, so this is a good one for me on my palette. I don't usually have it always out, but I'm going to really make an effort to use it more. So now these are all going to be left open so that I can... I use a lot of white. I will bring my tubes with me and squeeze them in. Or I will squeeze them right onto my palette and use these for um, mixing on the spot. So the only color that I'm pre-mixing for this palette is my shadow purple. Um, I use it a lot, and that's why I pre-mixed it. Now I am going to add in our friend here. Just a one, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm only going to put one on the watercolor because it's already going to stay. The gouache is the one that dries out the fastest. The watercolor doesn't dry out as quickly. Now I'm going to stir them up. This is a good example of how little water I use when I'm painting. Remember, I'm most of the time painting miniatures. And this is just a quick little blend. Alright, this burnt umber is often the thickest of all. So let's add a little bit of blending medium. So with the burnt umber, you might need to, as you can see, work it a bit to get it to that creamy stage. And I'm being really careful because I don't want to like accidentally contaminate the other. So this is just a slow, thoughtful, process. There we go. I'm actually going to put three more. Like I said, the burnt umber, it'll also be the one that dries out first out of all of them, most likely. Maybe the Naples yellow, right? Part of that is because it is a blended pigment. Every little drop counts.
And last but not least, this Naples yellow. So I'm just gonna Here we go. All right, so now those are all in like that. Now I'm gonna take my water, right? I'm just gonna lightly, so just a little mist of water on the top. All right, and I'm gonna put this on. And this now, you can see why it's so important to clean the edges. I'm just making sure it's a nice tight seal. Because so, also, I don't know about you, but I drop things all the time and you know when you're plain air painting you can you know really see so here I want to see what I can see this way here we go let's move this this way all right so you can see like I didn't perfectly clean these edges that's where I messed up but not really a big mess up right this is just so we're good and we're ready to stow this away now. <gasps> See how nicely it all fits together. Ta da! Yay! So here we go for cleanup. I have this leftover water from when I was cleaning my palette knife and so my eyedropper that I have the blending medium in because I also use it for water and I, I like to keep it clean anyway because the blending medium could eventually clog up that hole I'll just use this old paint water that I have here to kind of squeeze it in and out make sure it's you know free and clear and then I like to use these little bits, just dry it off. And then I can take a fresh squeeze out of this one and squeeze it into here, squeeze it out of here, squeeze it into here. And I've just rinsed my eyedropper nicely. Pop that right back in. So I like my eyedropper for adding just a tiny bit of water to something to make it more of a wash. If I don't want if I don't want to use a brush, because I don't I want to keep my brush maybe dry for a dry brush technique. So having something like this is wonderful. A little bit goes a long way with this guy. A little bit goes a long way. And then this is my water, which honestly, not very much uh, pigment ended up in this water. So I'm gonna stash it uh, and use it for painting uh, either later today or tomorrow. Well, thanks for joining me today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's video and that it was informative for you. I am going to include the Amazon link below for this little palette, um, which I'm not tipping right now <laughs> because I want to, I don't want to waste my payment. I'm like, oh my gosh. I know eventually I'll get over it eventually, or maybe not. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up it really helps the channel and the video to be able to keep it in the algorithm if you haven't subscribed i hope you consider doing so and if you'd like to be notified every time i put out a video you can hit that notification bell if you'd like to contribute 
to help keep me full of art supplies and traveling on the road to paint all 50 states. You can click on one of the links below in the description. You be can become a member on Patreon, which is a monthly membership. You can do a one-time PayPal uh, contribution, or you can buy a painting, even better. Uh, I know I don't have anything brand spanking new because I've been writing all summer, but if you go to my Instagram, all of the paintings that are available for sale are marked available. And I am working on ah, a website, so we'll hopefully have that up in the near future. All right, everyone, have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye.